Dear Linda Mary Montano, please, I beg you, I beg you to stop suffering. Stop hurting yourself. Stop being a victim and a martyr, a good Catholic saint. Stop it immediately. You look like a masochistic martyr. At 73, you should not be putting catheters up your nose, out your mouth. Ah! It's disgusting. And the acupuncture needles, you're still doing that? Stop it! The slapping, the tapping for your health, stop it! You're healthy, or maybe you're not healthy. Stop! Stop! If you promise to go and sit in your timeout chair, I will proceed with this film and tell the story of endurance art of the 60s and 70s and 80s, but stop suffering! Okay, stop it, you suffering addict. Stop it! Goodbye, love, Linda. Endurance art in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. In the mid-90s, the week before Christmas, I sat by my father's bed 24 hours a day for six days and nights in an upstate New York hospital. He was recovering from disc surgery. He was 85. I listened as he hallucinated from the painkillers while I observed visually the woman down the hall strapped to her chair across from the nurse's station she sounded like the female comedians on the British TV sitcom, Absolutely Fabulous. Barbara was her name. She was raging, remembering some past injustices from childhood, calling to God. I was the observer, watching it all, choosing to be there. Who was waiting in this scenario? Was it enduring? Was any of this art? Or was it just a case of life waiting to be transformed into art. Endurance. I have always been interested in enduring. As a young Catholic girl, I knelt before the bloody, gory crucifixion in our upstate New York church, and I waited, endured the discomfort that comes from kneeling for hours, endured the isolation that comes from choosing church over play, enduring the possibility that I might not be good enough or saintly enough to go to heaven or be like Jesus. I was definitely linked to suffering, penance, guilt. I was on that fast track at an early age. I remember nuns talking about Christ and how he endured the suffering of carrying the cross, how he fell down, how he was nailed to the cross and died forgiving everyone. His endurance got etched into my belief system when I was seven years old. I wanted to be a saint, and to do that, I had to suffer like Jesus. That was the plot and storyline for my life quest. But at 20, I entered a convent, enduring two years as a Catholic nun, living in silence those years, except for the one hour a day when we talked. We talked all together while mending our underpants. I loved the community and commitment and dedication to a higher good and absolutely pure goal, but I left anorexic having lost 50 pounds in six months near death. When I was introduced to art, I immediately found a way to transfer religious fervor and predilection for penance and suffering into my work. For example, I sat for hours, lay down for hours, danced for hours in public, asking audiences to watch me, to give me attention, to witness my commitment. And in doing so, 
I felt more alive as I soaked in their attention. It was as if I couldn't exist without them. Their presence was like a bath of recognition, of approval, and delight at my actions. Without the other's gaze, I didn't feel alive. So I learned more intricate and absorbing and mysterious ways of keeping the other, the viewer, there by manipulating them into a position of voyeur, a position of midwife, a position of co-creator. One, enduring the glance as nun saint, white face lying three hours in a chicken bed, surrounded by 12 paper mache chickens wearing baby US kids. Two, Sitting in nine places in Rochester, New York on the third, sixth, and ninth of the third month for three hours each time, publicly practicing meditation. Three, walking on a treadmill three hours telling my story, wearing a smile device to teach me to be positive. Four, lying three hours, seven acupuncture needles in my conception vessel. Five, taking a job as a Salvation Army bell ringer, life as art. Six, handcuffed to Tom Marioni for three days. All is art, bathroom, eating, walking. Seven, blindfolded for a week, practicing interdependence and preparation for potential blindness. Eight, living in a room as five different personas, one a day, drawing one drawing a day as that person. Nine, channeling anger into a body discipline by studying the martial arts for years as life art. 10, mourning the murder of my ex-husband as art for two years because I had no access to feelings with a therapist or myself. 11, channeling a song for three hours as my husband after his death. 12, camping in many galleries, museums, enclosed spaces, using the time to cultivate silence. 13, going to New York City to the new museum once a month for seven years to read palms, do tarot, and give art life counseling. 14, live tied by a rope to Taishin Shea for one year, never touching. There is a psychological Freudian view to my work, but let's suppose that the work is also a very deeply intuitive, shamanic and ritualistic way that I invented to lead myself into altered states of consciousness while bringing the viewer along with me on this interior journey. Possibly both suppositions are correct. Sometimes there is a thin line between neurotic narcissism and tantric shamanic soul travel. Like Catherine of Siena, I was enamored of endurance so I could tough it out, prepare myself for the hard knocks of life, so I could fight the good fight, bite the bullet, so I could keep it up, go the whole nine yards, get the job done, and give my all. Later, I became enamored of Hindu yogis and their methods of achieving stillness, concentration, equanimity, and inner silence. This Tibetan nun, lost in trance, is performing rigorous, repetitive mantras, visualizations, penances, making her impervious to cold, pain, the mind, and the illusions of the relative world. 
we have looked at my background, let's now look at what might be some universal reasons. Endurance is built into our system because under the skin lies a galaxy of networks, a mysterious world of muscles, bones, veins, and organs which endure our emotional states, endure our thoughts, endure our various and sundry diets, endure our environmental changes, endure our lovemaking, endure our imaginations, endure our memories, endure our personal backgrounds, endure our PTSD, endure our childhood issues. This body-mind endures our parents, endures the church, endures institutions which mold us. So it is not surprising that in the late 60s there came into being a school or group of artists loosely called body artists. Many of us practice the art called endurance. Some of the reasons might be, one, that endurance was a reaction against the linearity and dogmatism of minimal art. Two, some endurance artists were interested in leaving the world of buying and selling art, making our work for each other, not for slick documents or audiences of strangers. Three, 35 years ago, artists for the first time became publicly interested in marijuana, hashish, LSD, peyote, drugs which allowed them to hang out for long periods of time in trance and altered states as art. Four, the women's movement and civil rights movements inspired artists to experiment with issues of sensitivity training, consciousness raising, and activism as art. Five, artists of the 60s formed deep bonds with both Eastern spiritual teachers and American Indian elders. Both helped us to feel and see new ways to honor and appreciate our bodies, the earth, helping us to learn ways to perform self-initiatory and risk-taking rituals on ourselves, to mark important passages, risk-taking death rituals, maturity rites, later became translated into performance art. Is it possible that bungee jumping and appearances on Geraldo Rivera are not Generation X's version of the genre, as is hazing? Women performed, in fact, performance art became the art of choice for women artists in the 70s, offering us a fluid, intuitive, versatile, and dynamic media akin to the physical waiting and enduring of childbirth and child raising. One. Faith wilding transformed the pain of waiting into art. Two, Nancy Yodelman exaggerated our objectification as females. Three, the Women's Building and Judy Chicago's group performed rites of healing and consciousness raising. Four, Women made visible the bondage of female oppression. Five, Carolee Schneeman made visceral the blood ritual women wait for, endure, and transform each month. Six, Hannah Wilkie satirized rites of scarification using bubblegum vaginas as metaphor and symbol later enduring cancer as art. Seven, Eleanor Anton endured a diet as art, photographing herself in time 
and sequence. Eight, Mural Ukulis shook the hand of every New York City garbage collector, raising the status of female and male home garbage maintenance to an art. Nine, Annie Sprinkle endured audiences examining her cervix. 10, Suzanne Lacey on left had a Hollywood makeover simulating old age, preparing herself for the time that will come and practicing solidarity with that forgotten population. Do men endure differently? Do they wait? Do they wait as women? Are they accustomed to waiting, having that nine months time frame coded in female cells? Do men initiate themselves differently externally with more danger? One, Joseph Boys waited in a New York gallery in a room with a coyote wrapped in felt. As he had been wrapped when shot down in the Crimea and found by natives of that area who smothered him in fat, wrapped him in felt, saving his life. Two, Taishin Shea, one of his one year waits in a cell for one year. No TV, no talking, no toilet. Then later, one year on the streets of New York City, one year punching a time clock every hour on the hour, waiting. Three, Chris Burden, nailed cruciform fashion to a VW bug. Four, Stellark, hanging in imitation of American Indian dancers who hang objects to their flesh and dance until the flesh rips. Five, Terry Fox, lying down, tied to the elements, communicating a recognition of life using hospital images found during his cancer treatment. Six, Chris Burden, shot in the arm, enduring pain, danger. Seven, Richard Long, walking as art in Scotland, enduring a relationship with nature and time, creating patterns on the earth using natural actions. Eight, Vito Acconci, enduring the pain of hair removal, questioning gender and body, male to female. Nine, Stellark, enduring in preparation for bionic implants, when the body will be merely a receptacle for intelligent microchips. 10, Tom Marioni, a time-based performance that he performs every Wednesday, titled, Drinking Beer with Your Friends is the Highest Art, inviting friends to his gallery to drink beer. Life as art. Couples also use the genre of body art endurance as a metaphor for the endurance of relationships. One, Alex and Alison Gray endured public silence and meditation in a cross of apples, death, and life as art. Two, Marina Abramovich and Ule used a single braid and almost their twin physiques to mark time and codependence as art. Three, Barbara Smith taught the techniques of tantric sex as art, practicing long held positions so that sex could be witnessed in a gallery setting and it could be felt to be a mutual energy exchange and not a performance contest. Four, 
Linda Montano and Taishin Shea endured life tasks, holding jobs, traveling together, riding bikes as art. An artist began addressing the invisibility of the internet, enduring without being there, preparing for the robots we may become in the future. One. Linda Mary Montano, standing in for myself. Two, Linda Mary Montano, sitting in for myself at the new museum. From 1984 to 1998, my endurance was titled 14 Years of Living Art. a chakra event which was inspired by my guru, Brahmananda Saraswati from India. India, the land of magic, eroticism, excess, color, delight, sensuality, and spirituality. My teacher said there were seven centers in the body, symbolic magnets drawing intelligence and abundant energy into their center. Gopi Krishna says, I sat breathing slowly, rhythmically, my attention drawn toward the crown of my head. To conclude, dear Linda, it's time to stop. That's enough. Stop enduring life. Stop creating suffering. Stop. 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 Stop it. Light is enough. Thank you. Thank you. Love. Land.